welcome back to the Lack and Shade Review. I'm Lilac. And I'm Nightshade. What up, though? All right. So y'all know how this works. We got Black Spotlight. We've got What They Talking About. We got the review. And then we've got Get Lifted. So let's jump right in to the Black Spotlight. So our first uh, Black Spotlight is Ariel Smith. She's a Birmingham native and a fellow UAB alum. Go Blazers. Um, she has a BS in business management and a master's degree in education from Vanderbilt University. Mm, and she's Vandy. currently working on her PhD. Nice. So her work consists of researching and telling stories of black, about black owned food trucks, which is awesome like that's like my dream yeah, is to a, go across the country and like eat all sorts of food and yeah. everything so she's like living the dream right now right. and uh so she launched this brand and it's called the food truck scholar she launched it in june of 2018 and she's been doing a podcast by the same name since march of 2019 so, like I said, she travels all over the world. She's been here. She's been to Atlanta. She's been to um, Tennessee and um, New, uh, New York, I believe, and Denver and L.A. Just get gathering all these stories and talking to all these people who have uh, started their own thing. And I've been binging her podcast, and there's some amazing stories hmm. that she's been able to get from these people who have, you know, basically started from nothing. It started just hustling, just you know, asking friends, hey, do you want to play? Well, here's how much I'm charging. I'm doing this food night. Um, she actually interviewed someone who's been on Food Network that was a part of the big food truck race, that show. Uh, she interviewed that person. She interviewed a guy that was an ex-con who started uh, his own food truck in L.A. So she's doing some amazing, wonderful, awesome things, just bringing light to all these people who have started their own businesses. And, you know, food trucks are huge now. Yeah. They're a huge thing. Yeah. They're um, convenient, if anything. Yeah, yeah, they're convenient. And the food is Ridiculous. immaculate yeah, it's, it's so really good, good. It's there are like restaurants there's a couple of food trucks here that are really really good right. so you know we just want to give like kudos to her for like even coming up for this idea i've actually met her before um we met through americorps um she was vista in the same office as i was vista but we weren't there at the same time mm. and so uh, we met and she told me about what her project was going to be and it's just taken off since then so nice. Congratulations to you, ma'am. Um, congratulations on um, being, uh, she got, um, she was able to start doing her actual research for a PhD recently. Mm. She took her test to enter to the, the PhD program and she got in. So nice. congratulations okay. to you on that. I didn't know how to word that, so I'm, I apologize. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yes, uh, congratulations to you and just keep doing what you're doing. Keep telling these people's stories and hopefully we can, get you on the show and do an interview and kind of talk about how, what your process was and everything because it's just a wonderful amazing awesome story nice. so ariel smith um if you want to get with her her instagram is at the food scholar uh on instagram and then on twitter is uh black foodie or foodie noir Foodie Noir oh, wow. on, <laughs> on, twi on Twitter. That's, that's perfect. So, yeah, check her out. She's got some really amazing things on her page. And she has pictures of all the food she's eaten. Mm. Oh, my God. So <laughs> jealous. So, Ariel, again, Ariel Smith. Nice. Nice. All right. So, it's my turn, right? Yep. All right. So, the guy that I have is a gentleman by the name of Ryan Jamal Swain. Yes. He's an actor slash dancer. And he's famous right now alpha being on the show pose on fx now i'm presenting this gentleman because wow are you really doing that right now okay All yes right. shout out i love pose pose is like one of my favorite <laughs> shows <laughs> on television right now like not just ryan jamal swain but india moore india moore i love you she was also in um uh queen and slim Billy so, Porter, that guy. Is, Billy he's Porter a is yeah, he's phenomenal. Yeah. Also, MJ Rodriguez, I love, I love you too. You play Blanca. I love the entire cast. It's so good. I love it. But I'm anyway. just trying to figure out where this energy came from. Yep. 
I mean, it's just out of nowhere. It's energy. Jesus. All right. So, Roger Ball <laughs> Sway. <laughs> uh, he played on the show Pose. Uh, that's pretty much his uh, biggest role thus far. He played the character Damon Richards. Uh, the young man was born in Orlando, Florida, but he was raised here in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, he attended the Alabama School of Fine Arts. He, her- he earned his BFA uh, from Howard University. And he also studied at the British Drama Academy in Oxford, UK. Uh, it's pretty awesome. That's a very, very, very prestigious school to get into. Um, before I pose, uh, a couple of things you might know about if you're from the Birmingham area. If you're not, uh, I'll break it down to you a little bit in a minute. But uh, before I pose, he worked for the Alabama Dance Academy, a very, very big and well-known academy here in uh, uh, Alabama, the Alabama Ballet. You get there, you're pretty much your next step is probably New York, LA, Atlanta, and all these other big dance companies because they're kind of like a, uh, a mecca for developing a lot of great talent that comes out of that uh, ballet academy. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have the Red Mount Theater Company, also another uh, another mecca for great theater talent. A lot of people that have gone to uh, have come out of the Red Mount Theater uh, Company have you know transitioned up into New York and definitely done a lot of Broadway shows and things like that. So Red Mountain is, has has created a lot of talent. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Red Mount Children Theater, a lot of. Actors start off there when they're when they're youngins, when they just figure out, okay, this is the acting I want to do. If you make it through the Birmingham uh, Children's Theater, they develop you and they send you on up to the next level, which is Red Mountain. So that's a lot of developmental uh, stages that are created here in Birmingham in regards to getting young men and women prepared for the next level in theater and even film. And lastly, it's the Virginia Sanford Theater. Uh, the Virginia Sanford Theater man has held a lot of uh, a lot of uh, functions uh, lately. I mean, the Nutcracker was there, uh, Cinderella was there. A lot of interesting um, performances uh, was held there. So it's it's a very uh, popular venue here in Birmingham that a lot of outside um, sources come to and, and, and inhabit. So um, yeah, you know, Ryan Jamal Swain, man, he. You know, is is a youngster in the game, but he's definitely blazing the trail. He's definitely uh, representing Birmingham very, very well. And uh, I'm very proud of the young man. And I'm grateful that, you know, in light of, you know, the way society is, you know, we just had a show about transgender issues and we mentioned polls because there's a lot of transgender um, women that are on that show. And, you know, he's he's a uh, he's gay. He's a gay man. And, you know, he stands proud. And, you know, at the end of the day, that's what you should do. I appreciate transgender men and women and even gay men and women that are standing by who and what they are. Because, you know, that's that you have more people in this world, whether they're straight or gay, they don't even know who they are and not willing to stand up for who they are. So the fact that this young man is standing in that light, regardless of the 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 shadow that society tries to uh, overcast, you know, stand proud, young man, continue to do what you're doing. And congratulations. Uh, he just won an award. Um, what was that daggum show? Um, um so uh, TV One just TV gave One. him a yes. award. He, uh, was it Best Support Actor or something like that? I think I was. believe so. Or Best Performance or something. But he won the award. And he gave a phenomenal speech, mentioning Birmingham, mentioning the Alabama School of Fine Arts, mentioned his alma mater, uh, Howard University, and. I mean, I couldn't be more proud of the gentleman that and uh, that's what he has become and what he's doing. And I just hope and pray that he stays in the in the light in a positive way and continue to move forward. OK, so on to what they talking about. What they talking about. I like saying that. I know you do. And I'm going to keep doing it because yeah. you, you, you go quit looking at me like that. I'm going to be fighting up on the screen. You know? Anyway, so no. <clears throat> the first subject that we have is. Uh, <laughs> So Ice Cube's all that performance. Oh, Lord. So <laughs> there's just been video that's been going on around the internet. And uh, I think most of you by now have probably seen it. It's kind of old. Yeah, but it's about what, over a decade. It's some change over. But yeah. yeah. So basically, like, <laughs> it's a video from all that. And if you don't know what all that is, you're probably either too young or like, much older than us and right. probably not but anyway right. they got they did a remake though they got a, they do they did a remake it's, right. it's i watched a couple of episodes it's not the same no. but you know it's a different time so it's a little bit different um speaking of different times so ice cube was a performer on all that now this is like old school all that with keenan and, and kill yeah. you know um who was on there at the time uh, Josh was one of the original cast what's members. Uh, what's, what's the boy name? Everybody be picking on him. Uh, oh, Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon. I don't think Ken, Nick Cannon was on there at this point, but yeah, yeah but this he was is, on the show. This was like the original cast. Okay. Um, 
so at the time, like, you know, they had a lot of musical guests. And they, a lot of them were, like, hip-hop and R&B artists. Right. And then some of them were uh, pop artists. You you know, you had your boy and girl bands. And I think Britney Spears performed. Christina Aguilera. Like, all these, you know, people that were, like, hot and popping at the time. And for God's sake, TLC sang the uh, theme song. And they were, like, the first musical guest on the first episode. Mm-hmm. I remember that, like, way back when. <laughs> um, I think they even did a sketch with Kenan and Kill. But yeah. anyway. Yeah, very, like, very, the first two episodes, but, yeah, like that. First, yeah. yeah, first couple episodes. But, so, Mr. Cube came on there, and his biggest hit of the time was... Um, we be clubbing. We be clubbing. Yeah. Players Club, yeah, that that old. This is this is how old this situation is. We just wanna it, it, we're a bit amused by this, so yeah. It is because you know I remember him being on there and I remember him singing that song and I remember you know dancing and jigging in the living room yeah. or whatever. It was normal to us because uh, we were young. You know? But as an adult, I mean, uh, kind of cringy. Yeah, I mean, you guys. <laughs> I'm sorry, the visual for me as an adult, as a grown man, is to see my boy on stage. And he was singing, we were coming, like, yeah, because I watched the video and I was like, okay, I remember this. But then I was like, wow, them little kids is on the stage. And he uh, he encouraged them to come up on yeah, the stage. Yeah, he's like, come on, y'all. Come on, like, wow. come on, dance. We be clubbing. We be clubbing. Break it off, break it off. Y'all yeah. never listen. So I'm not going to say it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it was yeah. kind of Dem- cringy. Dem- Looking back at it now, I mean, we were all kids. We Dem- didn't, we didn't know any better. Them little white babies was on the stage, just just thinking they just as hip as they want to be. Yeah, the they were tearing <laughs> it up, buddy. But like, I was just sorry. thinking on the song, I was like, maybe. No, I was a kid, so I didn't know any better. But there was an there was an adults somewhere in charge of this show. And maybe they dropped the ball a little bit because it's just not an appropriate song for a kid show. Well, he he edited it. He edited. He the did. Song he did for television. You edited. know, honestly, I, that song's so old. But still, do you have anything? Yes, I looked at the lyrics. It was very okay. But so he, he he edited he radio himself the radio, radio a edited. lot, <laughs> a lot. But still, uh, the break it off. Get it right. Keep it tight. Break it off. Up. No. Yeah, get it. Keep it right. Keep it right. Keep it tight. Yeah. Break it off. Break it off. Make it soft. (laughs) 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 So it was on the soundtrack for Players Club, as he said. And Players Uh. Club was about a girl that decided to become a stripper to pay for college. Shout out to Lisa Ray. Shout out to Lisa Ray. (laughs) Shenanigans ensue. <laughs> um, oh, diamond. Here we go. Move forward. I'm sorry. <laughs> Drop the ball. I think. I, I, <laughs> uh, yeah. So. Um, uh, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, he he took the check for it, and they and they <sighs> had him on there and. But you know, cringe moment. He his his performance. Not to pick on Ice Cube because I love Cube. His performance was not the only inappropriate performance. So a few years back, uprocks dot com. You can go look it up. Wrote an article about five inappropriate all that musical performances. Mm. The one that stuck out to me in particular oh, was Aaliyah singing "Age Ain't Nothing But a Number." Oh, now this is when she had first come out. Yeah. Um, Kales would have loved to be in that crowd. <laughs> uh, I think she was about 15 years old, maybe. And so, you know, as, I think I, I was a few years younger than her, so Asian is a better number. Now, in my head, I was probably thinking about, I was probably like 10, so I'm thinking about like a maybe 12 or 13 year old. AJ, nothing but a number. Um, <laughs> Honestly, I, I, you know, I'm not laughing at that because I thought, first off, I had a crush on Leah. And I thought she was singing to me. A lot of people did. I mean, I don't care about everybody else. I'm talking about me. Okay. Me. Me. I I had a crush on Aaliyah. And when she said, age ain't nothing but a number, I thought she was talking to me. And I was like, that's right, Aaliyah. Age ain't nothing but a number. Let us meet. And we can make some things happen. I'm just saying. That's how I felt. That's how I felt about that song. 
So, you know, I mean, I, I know that's nothing to do with the show right now, but I just had to voice that and let people know that's how I felt. And that's where I was in that space at that particular moment in time. So I understand. But then it's... You, so she wasn't singing about <laughs> him or any guy his age at for all. Me, me. You're not going to mess this fantasy up for me. You're not. So R. Kelly helped her write that album. <laughs> That's crazy though, right? Um, the Pied Pipe of R&B. And we all know what his situation is right now. And we all know what the situation between those two were. Yeah. And she sang this on a children's show to a crowd of children. Right, right, right. <sighs> All jokes aside, man, I mean, but we didn't, I mean, obviously we didn't know what the heck was of going course, on. Of course. But if, like I said, if you we look at kids. it now. We were kids too. You could, yeah, you could definitely see. So. And the person that helped her write it and then, yeah. There was a lot of adults in the 90s and so forth. But there was a lot of overlooking too. That obviously, overlooked right? some, a, lot of a lot of things. Yeah. I mean, and so Kells wouldn't be. If, out as long as he was, as the people didn't overlook half the stuff he's doing. If you're a millennial and you're an older millennial, like we are, we're like on the cusp. We're like right between Gen X and mo- the millennial mm. age. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of us grew up during this time where a lot of things were either blatantly in your face or in the window. Um. Yeah, it it just doesn't look good now. Being an adult and knowing better now, it is it's very cringy. <laughs> I, very cringy. I don't. I mean, I'm good. I don't know what else to say about. I that. mean, honestly, like if you look back at a lot of shows on Nickelodeon, a lot of them were like super inappropriate. Even the ones that were deemed like yeah good yeah. to watch yeah like i go back and watch it sometimes and like i caught my kid watching rocco's modern life and i was like you don't need to watch that right well that i mean that's the, <laughs> that's, the, that's the beauty of, of of easter eggs in in like you know writing and in cartoons a lot of cartoons are more inappropriate than a lot of these actual adult television shows and and the, what makes it so bad is that they're very um you know they it's right it's hidden in plain sight yeah. What they do, you know what I mean? And you just look back at it and you're like, wow. I know some 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 people talk about some of the cartoons today being real bad. I'm like, um, do you not have you do you not remember like cow and chicken? Woo <laughs> 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 real oh, inappropriate stuff. Oh, and I think my mom was like, Y'all don't need to watch that. Turn it to something else and I think we watched it anyway. But anyway, sorry mom. <laughs> cow and chicken. Uh, I about but that. yeah, even back to the like really super old school, like Bugs Bunny and Tom and Jerry, yeah, and all that. They Looney were, Tunes had a lot Looney of stuff. Looney Tunes had they were doing. a lot of stuff. And, and then, then Sam and all that cussing he was doing. For example, if you go on Prime, I think they have like the classic cartoons mm-hmm. on Prime, and I've watched some of them. And there was like a lot of like Nazi sympathizer stuff. A lot of racist, a lot of a lot of racist stuff, like blackface and everything. So there was never a time where I think probably right now at this time, like excuse me, I watched some of the cartoons with my kid, and there's still some like hidden stuff in the window and stuff, but it's a lot cleaner now. Right. Because I think you know people are more conscious of what they're ingesting. It's a lot cleaner now than it used to be. Yeah. Because it was rough. Yeah. yeah. It might be why some of us are kind of cuckoo for Cocoa mean, Puffs. Yeah, but, I mean, I mean, come on. Some some stuff, you can't you can't blame it on the content. You can blame it on the human being and maybe the upbringing. But that's neither That either. too. But, you know, what you watch kind of plays. It does. It does. It plays a role. Albeit small, but, yeah, it does play a role. Right. All right. All right. Moving right along. Yeah, that craziness. <laughs> From... <laughs> From breaking it off to Honey Pot. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Tell me, I, I, I saw a meme on the Honey Pot recently. Um, so I'm, I was, very un, I'm, I was very unfamiliar with the Honey Pot ordeal. Um, I, you got to tell me about this Target commercial and that we're not about to talk about, but apparently Honey Pot is female co- cosmetics or female. Well, it's female feminine products. Feminine products. Okay, yes. that explains the meme that I saw earlier from about the young lady. She was saying that um, her woman area could sing. It, it felt rejuvenated and refreshed. 
So, honey pot. Um, <laughs> that's, this, what, that's what she said. I didn't say it. She said it. I was just, I was confused. I didn't know. So I was like, why would, why would that part be seen? I don't, and then, yeah. So it's, she said it gave her new life. I said, oh, all right. Well, okay. <laughs> so during Black History Month, <laughs> Target highlighted this company called Honey Pot that sells plant-based feminine products. Honey Pot was a vegan. Honey Pot was a business started by <laughs> B. Dixon. B. Dixon is a yeah. black uh, young black woman who started this company. Okay. She said that um, she suffered from bacterial vaginosis, <sighs> and mm. so she had a dream, and the ancestors gave her uh, this company. You know, they gave it to her in her dreams, and so she created this company, and it has all sorts of feminine products that are plant based. They're organic. Mm. Um, there's no uh, pesticides or chemicals or in, in any of her products. It's all natural, all plant-based things. Um, so I have actually tried some of her products because when I heard about this situation, I was like, oh, I've got to go support. And then I found out that, you know, the, some of the things that I use is similarly priced to the mainstream things that I've used in the past that have not worked for me, that have been uncomfortable, that have caused issues in different ways. And I'm sure if you're a woman um, in any way, you know what I'm talking about. Like a lot of these products are really, really gross and dangerous for you. And I've tried them and they're phenomenal. I love it. Like it's been very helpful because I get really bad cramps and everything, just like a lot of other women do. And this has really helped with all that. But anyway, <laughs> in the commercial, she stated how she started the company and how, with the help of Target, her business took off. She ended the commercial by saying, the reason why it's so important for Honey Pot to do well is so that the next black girl that comes up with a great idea can have a better opportunity. And that means a lot to me. Oh, that's awesome. That was a wonderful, beautiful statement. Mm -hmm. So encouraging, so inspiring, but then this happened. So the statement that she made in the commercial apparently caused an uproar. So a lot of white women and men, mind you, there's a feminine product and men yeah, got you, involved. What you worried about it for, man? I mean, took to commute <laughs> consumer review sites to give the company low ratings and to come up. On the commercial being racist. Wait, wait, stop, stop. That, wait, what? They said the commercial was racist because she said that she wanted the young black women, the young black girls, mm -hmm. to have the, an opportunity. The, the racist part was her saying the next young black girl. Okay, well, what the hell is wrong with that? So it's a black owned company, owned by a black woman, that she started herself on her own. And she wanted to encourage other young black women. Mm hmm. To do the same, and a lot of people had a problem with that because she didn't say all went girls, or she said, uh, or the fact that she's a black woman and she was trying to encourage other black women, basically. And they said, if like, oh, if white women had said they want to encourage young white girls to businesses, there would have been an uproar. And so. <laughs> One site, Trustpilot, had to shut down the their Honey Pot page, review page, due to a high influx of complaints that had nothing to do with the products themselves. So it was a lot of comments like that, men and women. I looked, I looked at Trustpilot myself, and there were a lot of, there were some women who commented, but the majority of them were white men, which is interesting to me because these women are, these products aren't even for men; they're for women specifically. Now. I'm not saying that the white women were right in what they said because I don't believe they were. But the fact that men jumped in on this and were some of the main ones uh, posting terrible comments and giving the company low ratings is very telling to me. Okay, wait a minute. All right, so... So you telling me some white men and white women went on this this page and commented about this woman, this black woman, speaking about 
black pride and be and about being proud and having black women to excel and be and being and wanting to set a standard for them. That's what they were being upset about. Okay, so I know you guys watched previous episodes of the show and you already know where I stand, especially when it comes to black women. Um, one of the things about this show that we take pride in is that we not only hope and seek to empower the black community, but we also hope and seek to inspire and empower black men and black women. Okay. Um, so these folks might well just be upset with Black History Month altogether. They might well be upset with just Black History altogether. Because this right here, this is the type of stuff that really pisses me off. Because I'm like, okay, first off, men, for example, do you don't even use the product. You ain't got nothing to do with the product. I think this is another ploy. This is another opportunity for some racist bigot to try to take advantage and try to manipulate the system or try to infiltrate the system and basically uh, downplay this woman's business. Okay? And it's going to fail what they're trying to do. Well, it has failed. Okay. Because since, the co- since then, the company has seen an overwhelming support and the products have sold out in several stores. Now, I told you okay. I, I started to use the product or, or I tried to find the products. Mm-hmm. As soon as I heard about what was going on, it was hard to find. Like, I was even surprised I was find, found anything. And there was only two packages of things left on the shelves. And That's it good. sold I'm out glad. on the website. That's good. Um, so she's doing amazing now. So to all those people who had a problem with what she was doing and how she was doing it and what she said, thank you because you helped her yeah. sell out. Yeah. And now her business is booming, honey. Yeah. So, you know, keep on hating. You know, they say they say the, the press and the attempts of people that try to downplay or try to like, uh, you know, spite Despite you, sometimes it works in your favor because, mm-hmm. like you said, with this situation, and it, it, it was definitely a re- reverse tactic. That okay, once they play, you know, they gave her exposure. That's the crazy thing yeah. about it. They gave her exposure. That was kind of brilliant on their part. That they first off, thank you. You know what? Thank you. Because I saw the thank commercial. You, <laughs> thank you, racist. I saw Appreciate the commercial. You, and I was like, oh, that's amazing. I have to go to Target to, that's to crazy. try it out. And then this happened, and I was like, oh, I'm supporting no matter what. I don't care if the products suck or if they're wonderful. I'm going to support her no matter what. Because, I mean, it's, you're right. Because, yeah. you, I mean, why? No, I'm not going to do that. Because I already know the answer to why. It's just really frustrating to see this, though. Mm-hmm. It really is. This woman is, is it was doing a very successful, had a very successful, has a very successful business, and is... Speaking obviously as of right now that I can see, but positivity mm-hmm. and creating products that work. The, the, at the end of the day, what she said didn't yeah. actually hurt anyone. Right. It didn't. I mean, if if you want people for everybody to look up to, there are plenty of other companies that also do the same thing. Now, from what I've seen, their prices are higher and she's a little bit more affordable for me. Mm-hmm. But, you know... There's plenty of examples, and there always have been. You know, me growing up as being a, being a woman and seeing all these commercials for feminine products, and most of the time the main character in the commercials is a white lady yeah. or a white girl. And a lot of times, like in the early, early times, they were usually blonde, blue hair, uh, blue eyes, not blue hair, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> blonde, blonde hair, blue eyes, and everything. Um, you know, I think it's and it's slowly but surely changing, and now you're seeing more different kinds of girls being represented, and that's what it's really about. It's about representation. Absolutely, you've yeah. had all of this time to be represented, and so now, and then when we complain about not having representation, well, you're like, well, go do your own thing. Right. If you're if you're gonna complain about not having enough representation, right. Right. and so then we go and do our own thing, and then we and have you, our representation, and then you get mad about that, and then you're mad because right. we want to encourage <laughs> you know, future generations <laughs> right. to continue that trend right. of having representation, right. and you have a problem with that. Yeah. So I would implore you, those people who made those terrible comments. To look inside yourself and do some self-evaluation. All right, so moving on. 
Jussie Smollett. Now, we will talk about this now, but I don't want to ever talk about it again. I know trial is coming up and everything, and this is the only time on this show that I will be mentioning this situation, because frankly, I'm exhausted.